some props you'll all know what it's like stand you know when it's not when they're not involved and then the, the call's given and you see them going oh fuck that's me you know and it's as simple as that it still it happens at that level obviously but again if you've got the analysis to do that great uh, I'll just wrap through these again so that that defense that uh, Tlenethi have got I've got the second one down there two pods so again what do you do there we could throw the ball to tail but the guy with the hat on in the Tlenethi team is quite quick across the ground so do we just have Kelly Brown shoot to the tail yeah possibly or do we try and draw him away from that middle pod so again, makes them go, and then you can back into the space in between the two pods. So it's quite, it's quite simple, but it's, it's effective. <coughs> again, it makes them think, do I chase or do I not? Again, short line out, they're, they're using two pods. So it's quite obvious what, where the hole is. There's two pods of three, and the, the hole's in the middle. Again, the, the short line, it's a lot of teams, a lot of coaches or a lot of teams don't use that many short line outs anyway, but they're still very effective if you've got a good thrower and, and the guys are quick across the ground. It's, it's pretty easy to beat teams that way. Again, you have an extra two players out in your attacking line. It depends what sort of attack you've got, whether that's beneficial to your team or not. You, you would have to decide that. So again, he's just, that's a throw catch, throwing it in the hole, pretty simple stuff. Same again, and if you look at their defence, not very well, oh, that's actually, he's just walked in and called that, that might be a one or a two or a three, he's, caught, he's just walked in, seen that they're not organised, two, just got, gets it in, Mark McMillan gets there, he reacts as well and, and away we go. Again, speed to the tail on a short line out, two pods, who are they going to mark? They're marking the front, they're marking the middle. If you've got an accurate enough throw and you can be quick enough, ping it down the back. It's wide open on a short line out. You'll always beat that team for speed because they've got to get three guys organised to get back and get up. You know where it's going. It's, it's pretty easy ball again against that sort of defence. Here, two pods again down the front or front and middle, <coughs> pretty simple stuff, just a lob, try to draw that middle pod back a bit with the movement, Justin Vaughan goes to back, again, they're probably not that bothered at putting too many pods up there, but just lets you see another example. <coughs> not organised at the tail, there's an example of the three call, not organised, let's just do it now, and we're away. Again, these are the sort of, if you can't, if you haven't got a hooker or the guys aren't switched on enough to call that, then you wouldn't use that. Five man line out. Waiting to see what they're doing. Again, ball down the back again. Let's go through it quickly. Throw catch again. I'll move on to the next ones. Uh, Again, slightly different from Leinster. Uh, <coughs> prop deciding whether he's lifting the front or lifting the, uh, the guy in the middle with a pod down the back. So again, that formation for us, we can't win the ball down the back unless we do some sort of movement because they would obviously be right there next to it. So it's what, what you would do there. Again, talked about making them honest early on. Put them up, they'll... they'll Try and win it. Interest that front prop. He turns to lift the next guy because he's read it and it is wide open on at the front. Again, you'll quite often find that the guy who's supposed to be covering the front looks to see where the ball's going. If you see him looking up there, he's not watching. Again, you decide whether that's a good lineup for you to use or not based on that it gives them an easy defensive line. One, just reacting to what they're doing. Probably got a penalty from that. Five man line out again. Slide it on. Oh, sorry. Walk in line outs. Walk in line outs are really useful. If you're struggling against certain teams, if you can get there quickly 
and you've got set guys to go in and win the ball, then just get there and get the ball in quickly. Defences can sometimes be not that quick to set up. Again, as coaches on the touchline, you could be going, you can have a quick analysis of what you think of their defence and go, geez, they're slow to the line outs. Let's get there and get the ball in. And you can certainly win two or three doing that before they start speeding their game up. Step line out, that's what, I, well, that's what I would call it, is you make, set your prop off the five metre line, they'll stand next to it. If he doesn't come with you, then it's an easy ball for John Beattie to win at the front. Or you just dummy and beat them going forward. And they'll always beat that prop who's in front of that jumper because he won't react to you. So it's, it's an easy ball to, to win. Uh, again, you want your prop setting off the five, it's up to you how far. Just if you're looking for ways to win ball, that's an easy way to win ball. Yeah. <coughs> you feel you work hard at it, and you might have the luxury of having time as well. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But how many codes or calls are, are the pack having to be familiar with? Well, what you would do is decide on the week of a game how which lineouts you're going to. I mean, you saw all those lineouts before, and you might decide on two full lineouts, a six man, a five man. So you go into the lineout with uh, the game with four lineouts. Right. You would then have certain options based on the defence that they use. So there would, wouldn't be that many you would take into the game. Uh, obviously, the codes cover a whole gambit of moves and you know fancy movement lineouts and all sorts of things. But the codes don't need to be that complicated. But the guys are familiar with the lineouts that you're going to be doing against that particular team, and that's what you would practice throughout the week. I mean, today, for example, we're playing Ulster at the weekend. We had one team doing the Ulster lineouts, uh, so we practiced our defence. But we also had them doing their line, uh, their defence, and I was showing them which lineouts would work against that defence. Uh, and then I produce a sheet with those lineouts on it, and we practice those straight the week. The guys get to to learn them that way. But uh, you, know, you don't go in with. I mean, we would have hundreds of options and all the various lineouts. You wouldn't go into the game with Al calling anything. It's pretty. You narrow it right down. Again, he loses that one. Why do you think he's trying to beat that pod going forward? That's Dan Turner in the middle. He's trying to beat the big number four there uh, going forward. Why did he not win that, do you think? It was too obvious. What else? What's he trying to do there? He's trying to get in front of the guy. Again, you could say that he was far too, he's too slow across the ground. He needs to be much, he needs to get in front of four really quickly. He's trying to dummy on Kelly Brown at the back there and then go. But the ball could be coming in a lot quicker too. So it wasn't necessarily the wrong call, it just wasn't executed properly. In fairness, he's also done really quite well there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What you're trying to, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So you don't get it all your own way because yeah. they're obviously practicing, they've seen your line out. So the idea is to get in front of them. But, but if, the, if he'd got there quicker and the ball had been zipped in instead of sort of, he would have probably had that before then. So there were two things wrong with that there. It's probably just been picky, really. <coughs> Again, just beating the guy going forward, that's just speed. But they're kind of giving you the front there. Wasn't particularly good after that, so I'm not sure that. Just a dummy. In between the two pods, if they're doing the two pods. Not accurate. So again, you can see what they're trying to do. John BT in between that pod again. Ulster, or uh, Leinster, sorry, reacted quite well there. But the throw wasn't accurate. So these are the sort of things you would pick up. That's Pat MacArthur, funnily enough, who had the... I'll move on to the... Uh, I'll, do, I'll do some defence for you, just quickly. And then we can go out. Now again, the analysis on Leinster, we would decide what defence we were going to use. And we'd started off with the, the second one down there, two pods, and then the, the guys down the back. And Kelly Brown would be the guy that would be making the decision whether, we went back, whether, whether he went back and left, lifted. So again, two pods. We're trying to react to what they're doing. Again, not particularly defence, but you could argue the squint was throw there, but they've had a go at something. The two guys off the tail, given that we've got the two pods and that's what we're going to be working on, make, if they win the ball near the front, they can put pressure on the next part of the line out, which is that bit which worked 
Now, line out uh, is not about winning the opposition ball solely. It's about making them win ball in certain areas and then disrupting what happens next. That might be easier for you to do that than actually win the line out. So you can set your line out defence up a certain way that will make them throw to a certain area and that will allow a guy to shoot out on 10. Maybe their nine's not very good at passing. Maybe their 10 is too flat or you want to put pressure on 10 because he's good or, you know, there's reasons for doing that too. Yeah. On defense, yeah. The Definitely. <coughs> I mean that one there, the fourth one down there. We've got seven off the tail. You might put him out mm. the inside or outside ten. It's up to you. Yeah. Uh, no problem doing that at all. Okay. It's how he's actually closer though. If he's, he's on the line yeah, because he could just be in a sprint. You could even put a winger there if you if you wanted to. You want to do that? <laughs> Again, different kind of defence there. We've gone the two pod at the front, pod at the tail. Just to put pressure on that way. Be and try and lift. I mean, it's not technically, yeah, it's, well, it's illegal to lift right across into their line out, but you would definitely try and get them to do that. Because it might not be that the, you actually win the ball, but you can actually disrupt by barging into them, basically. Again, referees don't seem to pick up on it. Certainly, ha we've learned that from hard lessons about happening to us and the referees not doing anything about it. <coughs> and again, John Barkley gets through and we get the scrum for the knock-on. Two pods again. Now, again from them, really sharp line out. That's sharp, accurate throw. Now, are we going in the throw? Are we watching the man? Basically, they've done everything spot on there and he's just beating, out, beating us for speed there. I don't know why I've got that one in, because that's not particularly good. All right, so it's, so it's like, well, what are we actually doing there? Kelly's been caught. Yeah, John Barkley's going, there's no way I'm going down the line out to lift John Beatty. So he stays where he is. And so we've made a bit of a mistake there. Al's maybe called one or two and has got that wrong. So it's an easy ball for them. Again, different line out, pod left at the front, pod at the tail, pod in the middle, and Al's just signalling he wants to go. John Beatty steals it. So it's just putting pressure on him that way. Just changing your line out. Don't do the same line out defence all the time. Same again. Just didn't get challenged hard enough there. But at least they're going up in the right areas. Just reacting to what's happening. Again, moving, call some, they'll call a code based on your defence. You can have your pods move during the call, which will then upset teams and they go, oh, oh no, they've, they know our calls or they're expecting to throw it to the hole and you've actually moved. You're just gambling there, really, and then attack coming forward. So Al Kellick, for example, there might call one, which would be him going up where the prop is, Ed Kelman. But actually, he's coming back, so everybody knows he's actually going to go back forward. And then react that way. You know there's a pod going up at the front, so you know it's going to be a slower type of throw. Mock that one up. Just reacting there, that's just speed. Reactions to what's happening. Ed Kalman, <coughs> he then reacts to Dan Turner go up. But that's a single lift at the front. Again, you don't need two lifters to, to have a go. The four, Dan Turner knows he's jumping. He's not waiting for somebody to come and lift him. He's got to jump. A uh, couple more. Again, we put the hooker in the channel there. Put nine at scrum half. Just Sometimes you might not want nine in the channel. We're in a sort of danger area there, so we'll not put too many, you know, not put too many guys too many guys in the line out, just a bit safer and just have Ed Kalman deciding whether he's lifting Al or not he didn't decide anything there but it's just like you see that there's a different option right there.
Now there, that sort of lineup that they've got with the two pods where it is, is sort of ideal against that defence. I mean, what options have they got? Uh, if they're going to go quick, you've got to have practised going as quick as them. Now, if you look at the guy at the front of the line out, his hands are on his shorts. Now, analysis would say the minute he takes his hands off his shorts, he's jumping. So that's the signal to go. So he takes his hands off and Tim Barker goes up in the front. So again, that's, a, that's just a, another analysis point. But you've obviously practised that. Uh, again, speed across the ground with your pod. They go back, you react to going back with them. Again, practice. You can't expect it to happen. You've got to, it takes a bit of practice to get it effective. Again, you probably should have won it, but at least we've made an, a mess of the line out. Last one. Just the prop reacting, he didn't win it. But again, prop decides, Murray Low, uh, third in from the line out there. They're trying to draw our pod back, but then he reacts to their prop turning immediately. Again, that's the point you were talking about, is getting the guys really switched on to doing that. And they've got to practice it. So Murray, even although he might, he's watching his prop to see when he's going to lift it. The minute he turns, he turns as well. And obviously the, the jumper at the front, Tim Barker, is looking at his man to see if he's going back or not. So he goes back a step. We didn't win it, but we can put pressure on the next bit. And then, my point earlier, make them win at the front, put pressure on them further out. Uh, uh, that, that'll do, fellas, for inside, I think. Unless, uh, has anyone got any questions they want to ask about defence or attack or type of teams that they've got? Or do you want to just go out and do some, have a look at some line-out drills? Most teams put the scrum half in the five. Yeah, yeah. Defensively, you mean? Is that what you're meaning? Well, no, when he's receiving the ball, he's, he's obviously standing there and then working towards him. Yeah, yeah. He stands, yeah. Again, you work out what sort of pass your scrum half's got. You've got to make sure that you have the players blocking in the line -out. If you've not got good blockers or they've got guys that shoot through the line -out, your ball presentation might pass the ball deeper to the nine. So it gives them more time. Your 10 might be a bit flatter in that case. It's just, it's just what you would do against certain teams. Uh, anything else? I would, I would say any line out works if you do it right. Uh, it's just practicing it. If you get confidence in your, now some of you might have some good lifters, some good line out jumpers, or you might not. But it's up to you to not spread them out. If you've got one good lifter and one good jumper, then obviously they should be together. Uh, shorter line outs again help if your thrower ins not, if your thrower's not ex spot on accurate or he's maybe not good at fizzing the ball in quickly. It just gives you more margin for error because you're throwing the ball into holes in between pods. Uh, it's, don't, don't think you've got to go away and do that. Uh, it's whatever line out you want, but it's the principles of what you put across will make it work and, and the personnel that you've got. Should we go out? What happens with when you do lots of drills, one after the other after the other, and trying to get the points across? The lifters here get quite tired and in the effectiveness or that it doesn't look, they start to get tired, they don't execute it properly. So it's bear in mind that that's likely to happen. Uh, I'm not dissing you already, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, it's quite tough for the guys that are lifting, but we want everybody to be able to lift, including jumpers. Uh, one thing I would say is one guy's got the lifting tape on or whatever you, for want of a better word. Again, do you, do you wear lifting tape on a, on a Saturday? And again, there's an expense there for clubs, but it makes a massive difference if they can take their legs up for, for jumping when you're doing line-outs. If they know they're doing line-outs one day a week or the, both sessions, they should come with their legs taped up. Uh, because again, when in Scotland, pissing with rain, it slips and then you don't get an effective line-out. Okay, so you can actually buy these things in the shops now that go up over your leg. I mean, they're not brilliant, but for training, and it saves on money because it costs a lot of money, all that tape and everything. Uh, just, a, just a point there. Uh, can I have a jumper come out? You jumper? I'm going to ask you to lie down. <laughs> lie down there on your back. All lie right. down your back, yeah. Now again, there was a point asked earlier on. We'll just let you freeze down there. Uh, soft hands, some second rows, big boys, sort of quite clumsy by nature. Uh, 
can be a bit wooden with their hands and you want to try and soften up their hands. <laughs> so just a, just a uh, short drill. So what happens is they're gripping the ball at you here, it's, they snatch it and they chuck the ball down to nine and that's maybe what your presentation's stuffed up because the guy's not got soft hands. A simple goalkeeping drill. Again, I'm going to throw the ball at you, you're going to catch it, but you want to make as little noise as possible when you catch it. You catch it with soft hands and you're just pinging it back to where my hands are, okay? So again, you just, just vary it, he can move, you can make him stretch. And again, oh, that's a bad drill. Just a simple drill, warm up drill for the jumpers. Good. He's actually good. He's got soft hands. Simple drill, nothing fancy, but it just gets it into their mind that they're actually catching the ball. They're not, they're not snatching at it. Again, you probably drop it if you snatch it, but it's the delivery down to nine, which is the next bit. You can stand it and you can chuck it here and put your hands there and he can, can walk around them, do what you like. So simple drill there. Now lift, you can have two props out, you get, you get up now. Again, he's not got tape on, but what I'm wanting is you guys to lift him. Show me how you would do it. Uh, you go in the middle here, prop by the side, you know, so as they can see. So you front? Yeah, okay. you go there. Now just stand, you can, what are the principles we're looking for here? What would you, what would you say to this guy you've never met? How would you get him to lift? Use your legs. If they do any weights at all, it's like dead, it's like lifting weights. It's not arms. You're not lifting. You're not lifting from here. You're getting as close in as you can. Again, a phrase: chase the feet into the lift. These two guys here should end up with the guy with their arms fully stretched and their chest almost together. They're trying to get together the two, the two lifters. You don't want you don't want this sort of scenario, okay? Or this sort of scenario, okay? Again, straight back, legs bent. Don't bend them too far, because then you're not in an explosive position. So the guys will know how strong they're, or where their best, where their optimum is to drive from. Okay, pretty simple. Let's see. Not too bad. Let's watch the book. That's good. Pretty good. That's actually a pretty good lift. Now the first one wasn't controlled. So again, you want them to, when he goes up here, he's not landing down there. So again, it's all about these guys being strong. Okay? Finishing the lift off, whether you want them to come face that way, the opposition, or step in behind, that's up to you what you want your defence to do or once you've won the ball. That's up to you. But I'll run through some drills and I'll get the guys uh, warmed up. It was a good, that was a good line. Can you do that? I'm going to start down the bottom here. Right guys, can I have you in pods of three? Uh, obviously a jumper and two lifters. Guys down the bottom here. We'll start down the bottom and then we'll work our way up. Many hookers do we have? One, two, three. <laughs> You're a hooker now as well. <laughs> right, this. White cone, orange cone, yellow cone, pretty simple stuff. Pods of three, can have one pod of three here, one in the middle, one in the orange, one over there. Uh, sorry, this, this side, you move down one. Sorry, this one, got that many cones everywhere. Pod of three in here. Three hookers, you face one of the teams. Again, if you don't hit the guy, you guys go and go and get it. You guys don't worry about it if you don't get it. Just leave it. You go. You guys go and get it. I'll shout out uh, white, orange, or yellow. You can. It can be one, two, or three. It's up to you. Just to get them to move. So again, the principles that you want are the lift that we had there. Strong legs, straight back, full extension. We'll see if we get it here. Okay, it's a warm-up drill. So again, it might not be too accurate to start with. Okay. Are we ready? You're reacting to my call. White. I'll shout white, orange, or yellow. Are we ready? White. Again, back to hooker. Let's get set again. White. White. 
Good. You can see various different levels here. Some are quicker than others. Some aren't as explosive as they could be. So again, you pick all these things up when you're doing it. Orange. <laughs> What's one thing the middle group could be doing? What should the jumper be doing? Or what could the prop be doing? Or the lifter? Tell them. Communicate. We've got to communicate. Come back, come back. You know, come to me. Or up. Whatever set, up. Or up. It's up to you. Whatever communication you want to get it right. Too slow in the middle there. We ready? Orange. Good. Hookers get the ball. Guys, you set up. So pretty simple stuff. Again, doesn't matter with the ball. We're going again. Yellow. You gotta go again. Back to the front. And what was wrong with that one? All of them. Not an accurate throw. Well, let's take this. If he doesn't hit the man, that's. So the hookers need a bit of work on that one. Tail ball. So as coaches, you might go, well, if this guy's playing, he's hit five. He's had five attempts. He hasn't hit the tail yet. He needs to work on his lineouts before we're going to start asking him to throw the ball down the tail. So your lineouts are already set as. Oh, well, you hit the middle and the front, so that's when you've got to base your lineups on. So your best players, jumpers, lifters, should be based around that area, given that this guy's throwing the ball in. Again, too slow to the back there. Do we all run backwards? You can, the quickest way you can get back there is to drill. Again, you're not going to be just three guys in the lineup. You might, if you decide to have a three-man lineup, but it's about speed across the ground. If you can run backwards and go quickly, that's fine. Ready? One. No, but, all right. Anyway, points been made. Last one. You can shout. I'm going to shout up when I want you to go up. But I'm going to make shout. Uh, yellow, orange, yellow, white. So you're going to be a lot of movement. When I shout up, you should be set to go as a three. You chuck it in when I shout up. OK? Yellow. White. Orange. Up. Just get some used to communicating. Again, it's up to you what you do. And we want the next one. Again, warm up drill. And you stay in your pods of three. Who could you come in? Have one on this cone, one in this cone, one in this cone. You start outside the line it. Simple drill. And have a hooker on this cone here. On the, on the five, sorry. On the five. You guys come in. I'll show a colour. I push red, you come in at the front, you come back to the red, you win the ball. Okay? You then walk, because you're in the red, you walk across. I'll shout another colour, maybe red again, you guys will shoot at the front. But the next group are in. Okay? So we'll have three guys there, so there we go back to that one. So you're always reacting to the channel you're in, the cones that are in that channel. Again, if you stuff up, you go and get it. Okay? So first three, and you just go through. And you come. Ready? Orange. Get it? It's your fault. Next one. Red. Good. You go across where you are. Next one come in. You're going to come in at the front. Orange. Again, it's a pretty simple drill. Just get us to communicate. It's a bit like that one, but it's something different. Again, accuracy of hookers. Communication from these guys, all those points coming out. That'll do, fellas. We're doing thousands of these, but. Can I have jump out the front of this one? Uh, sorry, lift out the front of that one, lift out the back. Three jumpers in the, on the three cones in the middle. How many guys have got left? Four. You guys come this side. You stand that side of the yellow cone. Can I, you uh, have we got any lifters in this group? Lifter. You go there, one. You, you, no, sorry, you stand back there. You go here, you go there, you stand there. Right, simple drill again. About speed across the ground, reacting to, or communicating. If I shout one, you win the ball on the front cone. If I shout two, you guys are coming and lifting him on this cone. If I shout three, He's coming at the back here. 
you were coming to lift them in the third cone. Four, that cone, five, you're going back to that cone. Now five, for you guys, because only four of you, you go all the way to the tail. So you're covering three, four, and five. Right? Again, we'll not bother chucking the ball in for this one. I would face that way. Yeah. If you think of it as a defensive drill, what you're really doing is reacting to what the opposition are doing here. But again, it could be the one call could be that thing I mentioned inside where the way they've defended, it's on for this guy to win the ball here. Just scream one, he comes in and wins the ball. So it's just about speed. It's about guys getting used to reacting as a group. Are we ready, guys? So I'll just shout one number. I want you to go up on that number. Don't bother chucking the ball in, although obviously you would do it with a ball. One. The whole time you're doing this, you're reinforcing the points about how they should be lifting. You can be noting down who needs extra work, who doesn't. Three. Again, what I would want, I would stress is, better to do the lift right than to try and rush it and not do it at all. So this fella here, not switched on. I shout three and he's like, that's me. He comes in and does a poor lift. Still should have been, still should have got there and done a lift. Now he could have communicated to this guy that he wasn't there. So you shouldn't have jumped with just him. You just wait until you've got the, the pods there, uh, the, the lifters there. Two. What you've got to do is tell them when you want to go up. Or when they get there, you should be ready to lift. Two. That's better, good, good lift. Five. You can carry on doing that as much as you like, depending on the guys you've got. But the next one, progression of that, I'll shout up when I want it to go up. So it's like defense. I might shout one, then I shout four. So it's got guys reacting and turning, get used to react, turning and, well, defending, basically. Or, chain, or dumbing and changing, that kind of thing. So again, I'll shout up, maybe five numbers, maybe one number. So you just got to react to everything. One, three, two, up. Good, pretty good. Pretty simple stuff. Three, five, one, up. Good. Last one. In fact, I'll move on. Don't want to tire the guys out and freeze you guys to death. You guys all face this way. And this time, for a defensive draw, you don't need to shout anything out. I'll hold up a finger. So you get one, uh, two, five. I'll do that when I want you to go up. You guys react. Okay? We'll do, uh, you come out. You come in here. You come in, you step out. So we've got four against four, just the numbers we've got. So we've got one, two, three, and four. Uh, sorry, one, two, and three. That's all we've got. Are ready? That's good defense, you just react to what's happening, not, didn't make it too easy there, but. So you guys are watching them and you're reacting to what they do, not looking at me. So again, the better they get at this, the quicker they'll, the quicker they'll be at mirroring what the opposition are doing. Okay, one more. <laughs> Not bad. So it's the kind of defensive drill for both of them because they're having to look at something else and react, and these guys are reacting to what's happening in front of them. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, right, guys. Pods of three again with the hooker. Get these guys running around you. Run around. We've got three, how many pods of three have we got? Three? Right, you're, who's your hooker? You come out. Who's your hooker? Doesn't matter, one of you. You come out, you three, pick a hooker. Doesn't matter. In this square, the yellow, white cones out to the halfway line there and the five meter line, right? 
you're running around in there passing the ball to one another. When I shout go, you've got to get to this point, your group, hooker, you've, you've got to get the ball to hooker, you've got to set up and win the ball at the front. Okay, so it's about running around, passing the ball, and then when I shout go, you're getting back to here, and you guys are getting back to over there. Right? So, jog, run around, get warmed up. In the square. Go! Good. And again, jog around. Again, it's just reactions, communicating. You've got to run three steps every time you get the ball. Spread out. Stay in the square. Go! Good. Now what you've not to do there is rush it. Now what's happening here is you actually rushed it and it wasn't quality ball. We want to get there as quickly as possible, get set, go through the principles of the lift, do it accurately. One more. So it's about trying to beat the opposition, but you won't win unless you win the ball, a quality ball. Go! Good. Again, coaching points are there for you, but it's just a drill. Gets the guys warmed up. Should be enjoyable, but I don't know. Again, another drill here. Uh, two pods of three. You bring your pod in. We'll enjoy this one. This is quite tiring. <laughs> you're a hooker, you're not doing it. You're all right. You're all right. This circle here, uh, is that the right circle? Yeah. Make it a bit bigger. This circle here is the area you're working in. Okay? As a pod of three. Hooker number one, you're on. There's another circle out the outside. It's, there's that many cones everywhere that it's getting a bit confusing, but. Wait a minute, let's just see if. It's, that's this. Yeah, that's it there. That's it there. In here, this circle here. And you come. The yellow circle. In you come, two pods of three in this yellow circle here. The hookers on the, the circle on the outside. I'll move this cone. And this one. You can stand anywhere around the outside and you're throwing the ball in to wherever he wants it. Okay? You can come to the front of the cone, the, the circle, you can go in the middle, you can just call it whenever you want. You guys have got to try and nick the ball off him. Another hooker, you. Just what we're just going to go two two balls. You can go anywhere you want. So you can use these two hookers. So you can decide. Yeah, yeah. You guys have got to react. It's just a bit of fun. See how they go. There's one. Give it back. Now you move. Good. Give it back. Good. You can go the same guy, that's good. Good. Doing well. Good, nice stop there. Now what it's forcing the opposition to do is get, they've got to defend that. They're not defending it as quick as the attacking team. Not communicating it well enough. Did pretty well with the front team though. Uh, the, the team that are winning the ball there, not too bad. But you want them getting used to getting there, getting quick ball, jostling for ball, you guys getting yourself organised to defend it, getting a pod up. It's a pretty simple uh, drill, but it's good fun for the guys, quite like it. Bit of competition. Do you want to see it done again, or are you quite happy with that? Uh, Let's see. Yeah, you could come in as a, I might go to here, and then go, I want to go back, like the drill over there, and then just kill it, hey? Yeah, and you're winning it, because they weren't getting up. I have a different pod, One, two, three, you guys, you come. You've been relegated. Yep. <laughs> Again, kill as many hookers as you want. If we've got four hookers, then. You normally have the defending side and the attacking side standing on the same side each time. So you're saying the defenders are always going to be on the left of the attackers. Doesn't matter. Attackers. No. Shift about. Yeah, but the purpose of this drill, you couldn't really. So all they're doing is trying to get themselves organised enough to get a man up. Just try to get them to switch on to the fact that line outs can be, you can win ball easily 
or you can defend ball easily if you just communicate that and get organized really. So again, you can decide, you could go, yeah, yeah, I want you. You could change and go there. You could get this guy. Do you want us to go defend to attack him? Yeah, you could, well, yeah, you can. You, do you want to attack? Now, what have you guys got to do? You've got to communicate, right? And don't panic, you don't have to, if they're standing next to you, don't call it in. Try and, try and lose them with another hooker. So you might not, maybe two or three attempts to get a ball that you need, they're going to win. Good. Come on, defence, let's go, organised. Good. That's good. Good defence. Next one. Who can get the ball? Good. Stay inside the circle. Good. Bill's on and off. Keep going, ball. Good, that's it. It's quite tiring. But it's good. That was well done, that group. Guy in the stalling top, sharp. That was good, good speed. Not bad throws there. Another drill, which is quite good fun. Uh, two pods of three, you want to rest, Bill? Yeah. Uh, we'll have a race from here to 22. Can I have a hooker standing here? Pod of three, that pod of three is working the last time you come out. Uh, you can try a different pod of three if you want. Keep you warm, fellas. We'll put a little foot wreck, you come out, you, you, sorry, what's your name? Yeah. Graham, you come out, you come as a lifter, uh, jumper, sorry. You guys are here. Hook on the halfway line. Pot of three here, right? Pot of three next to them. One hooker, simple drill. You're going to throw the ball in to your pot of three. You've got to try and match where they're going and neck the ball, okay? You can go as far back as you want. If you can go all the way to 22 and he can throw you the ball and you win it, that's fine. But what you're trying to do is beat this team. Once you've won it, you put the ball down, so you catch it, place the ball down, you come in, you get ready to throw from where that ball is. And you guys set up again and you throw it again. You can go any distance you want. Put it down. Good throw. Go on, defence. Good. You know there. Good. Well defended. Good. Let's go back. Let's use the other team. Have a breather, guys. You, you can go. You can still come. You can come forward as well. You know, if you think shit, we can't go. Too, we've gone too far back. You so see, you can do this. Just about beating this. But obviously, what I do is. Just, and you can slow it down. Wait for the ball. Good. That's it. Good. Let's get set early, hook up. Good. Accurate lifts all the time, keep going. It's not over yet. Again, if they make a mistake, they would stay in that place. Good. You're not there yet. He's waiting. Good, good defence. There you go. Keep going. Good defence. It's quite tiring. We line it. It's what you normally do at your club as you stand about. And we do, we practice the front ball and the guys at the back. Standing with the hands in the pockets getting cold. You can have the other guys, if you're working on a particular skill with a group, you can have these guys doing that, right? You guys, you go away and do the, and we'll see who wins, see how many throws it takes or how many steals the opposition got or whatever. Uh, I want to set up a five man line out. Uh, front jumper, back jumper, five, three jumpers in the middle. Yeah, in there. Wherever you want. Right on the, we're on the five, you come right at the five. Throw catch, line out. Again, based on the skills we've done, is all to do with winning the ball in the game. Can we have a scrum half? You can go scrum half. So you can judge the lift, the throw, the jumper's catch, and the presentation down at nine, see if it's accurate. Now we're going to do a throw catch to you first. So you can't move until he's let go of the ball. No one can move. 
That's you as well. So you either look at the hooker or he is your trigger. So the minute he moves, you know you've got to go. That's all right. And again. Same one again. Throw a catch to the front. Again, as a coach, what you then, you look at and you go, well, is that good? Are we good at doing throw catches? Not yet. Not yet. But you can then look at it and go, well, your throw is too slow in that last one. The throw catch has got to meet, when, once they reach the height, your ball should be there. Lift's not particularly good. Jumper, you've got to jump. Yeah. If you just stand there like that and then just do this, you're expecting to be lifted. So you've got to jump as well. This time, we'll do you. OK? Spread out. So it should be a spread out right to 15. You're just going where you are. Again, they've got a pod here and a pod there, so you're looking to win the ball in the middle. Pressure's on the hooker. Not a bad throw. Good ball. Not too bad. Again, one more. Not bad. So you then go throw catches. Maybe struggle when throw catches. Well, it's not bad there, but then you look at, right, we've got a five-man line, what other options do we have here? Fast ball to the front. Again, your prop. If he's standing right in the five, you're guaranteed their prop will stand right in the five. So you can use this guy to help you win the ball. If he stands slightly off the five, you can then lift your man here, or as he's coming towards you, you can do that, and you'll get in front of the prop who's standing here. If he's standing there, then you win the ball there. If he's standing here, you go out there. Right, and you just got to be quick. So you could be the trigger here. You can just shout, yep, and just go. So it's a fast ball to the front. Now you start there. I'm, I'm the prop. So you want you go to there. You start there. Start there. Yeah. Go. Right. Yep. 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 It's all right. One more. I want you to attack it. Don't wait for him. You're coming right to the front, and you're jumping. And that's, by, by that I mean, what you don't want to do is the guys to run to the front and then go and take their time to jump. They want to, you want to do that as quickly as possible. Okay? Go. Good, and this guy here, you can throw it as fast as you can. Next one. Uh, what one do you watch, what, what one do, should we do now? Dummy at the front. Again, it's basic stuff we'll go through here. Again, the, the opposition now getting wise to the fact you're winning front balls. So you shoot to the front as if you're going to do another one. You, and you step out the line. You can step in the line out, but referees are now picking that up. Uh, used to block the opposition, but can't, not letting you away with that now. So your job, you're actually going to be lifting uh, him. And, and so are you. So you're shooting to the front. You're going back to where you went. He's jumping out, and then you're lifting here. So again, they'll have two pods, probably based on this is a five man. So that's an easy way of winning ball. If, based on, based on the fact that you can't throw the ball down the back, you've got to win the ball around the front. Fine. You come, you come, dummy, step out. So you shoot to the front. Yeah, out, up. Okay, so you've got to look as if you're going to lift him. So come and do the lift, but you don't do it. Yep. 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 Now again, I want you coming back, maybe a step yep. to here. So what you're doing is he's he jumped out there, and then you went up here, and their pod will be right here. So you've got to throw the ball over that pod, obviously. Yep. Yeah. He could step out. The next one is that you come up, just walk through it. Come. He's coming here. Steps out. You come back, you come right back to here, and he just goes like that, and he's away. Now, the defence might chase that. Again, you'll get away with that once. That's one of the things I was talking about inside. If you do that one early on, it makes this, makes this prop here think, you know, there's no way I'm going here. They might win the ball there. Starts interesting the nine here, and it gives you a chance to get an option to get through there. Let's try that. Let's either, let's do the lob, and you either give it to him, or you give it to him. It's up to you. Good. Yeah. 
He would be the trigger. If he starts it, he just shouts. He just starts it. Yeah. Just set. All right. Sympathetic ball. Stay in sight. Stay in sight. Don't go into the five. We get pinged for that. Uh, that that's, I mean, that's basic options. I don't know if you want me to run through full lineouts or drives or defence. It's up to you. There are movement lineouts on this. Uh, simple one is you dummy in the middle. So you dummy in the middle. You then go down the back as if you're going to lift this guy prop. You go round. You either throw it there, that could be one move, or you come to this guy. Now you, again, you've got a prop standing here. Wherever he is, you could walk right up the line. You know you've got all this space to play with. If you stay here and their prop stays with it, then you can go forward. And, meet, and So you're really the key. Because that jumper, that lifter has got to lift this guy, his, this guy here. So you're the key. You decide where he goes up and you just communicate that. So it's pretty simple. Again, you're winning the ball in this area. So let's try that one then. So dummy in the middle. You then dummy at the tail. Now if you get a good throw, that's quite a good line. It win that one. And then you come round and you pick where you go. That's fine. Again, you need the dummy at the back. Prop. Graham, is it? Sorry. You then dummy, then come round. So as they're shooting back, timing is when they get there, that's when you go. So as it draws this pod back to the back. Just timing. Again, practice. Whatever you want them to do. Obviously that wouldn't work. That's too slow. So you don't in the middle, yeah. They're going to the tail, they're going to the tail. Yeah. Needs practice, obviously. <laughs> Another simple one. We'll use you down the front this time, give you something to do. You go you go at the tail. Is that step line that I talked about? Defence. Again, most teams will have two pods marking you. So you can either win the ball straight down the back or the pass ball at the front. The other one, they're really sharp defensively, the pod's marking you. Come to there and as a three, then go to there. So you come, sell the dummy, then you shoot. You've then just got to leap back two steps and lift. And you ping it in. So, dummy. E easy ball. Ball like that, rather than ball like that. It's probably the option. So you make sure you hit him. It's pretty sim it's pretty simple. Is there now there's is there anything else you want me to do in terms of line outs? Uh the fit I mean seeing the drive, you still slotting the, the guy behind them? Yep. Yep, totally If you it's a, yeah, it's up to you. If you set up a full line out. You should set up a full line out quick, turn this way. We'll do the line out that way. Now again, if we're lifting this guy, okay? If we're lifting this guy, the bike lifter lifts, steps in behind, right? Block, he's the guy that's likely to get sacked, not this guy. This guy lifts and then comes in here. Now you can go, you can lift and do that as well, and you just drive in here. Or this guy here, as you're lifting, say you've come in, say you've come in behind here, sorry, and you've come in at the front here, you've lifted, won the ball. As this is happening, as the guy's on the way down, this guy comes in here. Because that's the guy, these, this is the guy that's trying to disrupt, there'll be a lifter. Again, it might be uh, your, your uh, green, they're at your attack and they're not jumping, so they're ready to sack you. So you've actually, as the guy's on the way down, referee will be looking at the ball, they always do. That's when you get in there and obstruct, basically. You're just trying to blow that guy out of the way. And he might come in, just drive, right, drive as hard as he can in here. But what you've managed to do is set up your drive. And again, it's how you want to do your drive after that. Whether it's the prop, this guy comes over the top. Again, a good line out is when you've got props at either end, you have the props come in over the top of the ball. So say you come in on the ball, imagine the ball's there. You come in behind, you're facing that way. You've gone in there. 
right, and you bind on or whatever, you've destroyed your man. The two props come right over the top. Again, you could have them bind on there, but you can have them right over the top. They do that, and then you just slot in there. And that's quite, that's really quite a strong heads together. So it's like an arrow. It's difficult to sack that. Again, if these guys are fighting and this guy gets sacked, you guys will be coming round and you keep that principle going. You keep the two guys coming over the, over the top, trying to create an arrow head and the ball carrier, just this fellow here, just keeps the ball. You can transfer the ball and do other things, but teams get good at batting the ball down. What do you, um, what do you reckon to um, the lifters when they've got the follower up in the air? Yeah, the other thing is, guy's made a good point. You can lift the guy up, we can lift him up and drop him out the line, and you guys can either form your arrow, arrow head that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some teams will blitz, some teams will. So it's whatever is effective for your team, but that's another option. You're, you're dropping the guy out the line out, keep him safe. Uh, there's obviously shift line outs, shift drives where the guy comes in and, and turns and the next guy drives in him and then two guys come over as the arrow head. That's, that's never really changed much to be honest. Even since Barney's day, that's... You drive the ball Barney? No. Is there anything else? I mean, if there's any points you want to discuss, we can go inside and do that. If there's anything you want to see, you can, you'll have to do it here.